Here's our fourth lesson in the factoring unit. In the previous lesson, you learned how to factor quadratics that were in the format x squared plus bx plus c, where the leading coefficient was 1. In this lesson, you're going to learn how to factor quadratics that are in the format ax squared plus bx plus c, where the leading coefficient, a, is not 1 and can't be common factored out. Anytime we're factoring any of these quadratics, we're going to follow four steps. Step one, check for any common factors that can be factored out. Um, just to make sure, maybe that a value is a common factor, maybe you can take it out, and then you can use the factoring method we learned in the last lesson. Step two, you're going to replace the middle term, bx, with two terms whose coefficients have a sum of b and a product, not just of the c value, but of whatever a times c is. Then we're going to factor it by grouping. So step three says group pairs of terms and remove a common factor from each pair. And step four, remove the common binomial factor. Let's go to example one and see what this method is going to look like. Example one, factor each of the following. Part A, we have a quadratic that has three terms and the leading coefficient is not one, it's a three. The first thing you should try and do is check and see if there are any common factors you can take out. Maybe we can common factor out that three. But with these three terms, three doesn't go into five and two, so we're not going to be able to common factor out that coefficient of three. That means we're not going to be able to factor this the fast way that we learned in the previous lesson. We're going to have to factor this by the method of decomposition. We're going to have to split the middle term into two terms that satisfy a product and sum that we need to find. We need to find the integers that have a product of a times c. So three times negative two. And three times negative two is negative six. And the integers also have to have a sum of the b value, the coefficient of the x, which is negative five. The integers that satisfy this product and sum are negative six and one. Negative six times one is negative six negative six plus one is negative five. Now, because the leading coefficient of this quadratic is not one, I can't go right to my factors. What I have to do is split the middle term into a sum of integers that have coefficients of negative six and one, because those are the values that satisfy the product and sum. My first term, the three X squared is going to stay, but I'm going to split the negative five X into negative six X plus one X. And that minus two, the constant term at the end, needs to stay. Hopefully you can see why this line is equivalent to the line above. Negative six x plus one x is negative five x. The reason why we split it into these two values is because when I factor this by grouping, I'm going to end up with a common binomial, which is going to allow me to get it into factored form. If I take a common factor from the first two terms, the three x squared and the negative six x, a common factor between those two terms would be 3x. I then need to divide both of those terms by the common factor I removed. 3x squared divided by 3x is x, and negative 6x divided by 3x is negative 2. If I look at the last two terms as a group, 1x minus 2, there are no common factors that I could remove other than a 1, but I do want to write that. I'll write that I'm removing a common factor of one and then in brackets divide both of the terms by one. X divided by one is X and negative two divided by one is negative two. Notice I have a common binomial. Both of my terms have an X minus two. That means I can remove X minus two as my first factor. And then my second factor I will get by dividing both of my terms by the X minus two I took out. Three X times X minus two divided by x minus two, the x minus twos cancel, and I get three x. One times x minus two, divided by x minus two, something divided by itself is just one. So my factored form version of the quadratic is x minus two times three x plus one. Notice if you wanted to check if this was right, just expand it back out using FOIL and you would get the original expression. Let's try part B. Once again, a quadratic where the leading coefficient is not one, it's two. What we should do first is see if we can remove it as a common factor. Does two divide evenly into 11 and 12? No, so we're not going to be able to remove it as a common factor. So we will have to factor this the long way using the method of decomposition. 
we will find numbers that have a product of a times c, so a product of 2 times 12, which is 24, and a sum of the b value, 11. If I can find integers that satisfy this product and sum, I will know what to split the middle term into. 3 and 8 multiply to 24 and add to 11. So what I'm going to do is rewrite the original quadratic, but I'm going to split the middle term into 3x plus 8x. And I split that middle term into those specifically because 3 and 8 satisfy the product and sum. And now if I factor this by grouping, I will get a common binomial. From the first two terms, I could common factor out an x. And when I divide each of those first two terms by x, I would get 2x plus 3. The last two terms, 8x plus 12, if I removed a common factor from those two terms, the greatest common factor between 8x and 12 would be 4. When I divide each of those terms by 4, 8x divided by 4 is 2x, and 12 divided by 4 is 3. Notice once again, I have a common binomial, 2x plus 3. That means that what we're doing is working. If we didn't get a common binomial, that means you did something wrong. Since it's a common binomial between the two terms, I can factor that out as my first factor. And then my second factor I will get when I divide both of my terms by the 2x plus 3 I took out. When I divide x times 2x plus 3 by 2x plus 3, I get x. And when I divide 4 times 2x plus 3 by 2x plus 3, I get 4. Let's try a few more examples. Part C is going to be of the same difficulty as the first few, and then we'll get some variations of these questions as we go. Part C, quadratic with three terms, the leading coefficient, the A value, is not 1, it's 6. We should check if we could common factor it out, but 6 doesn't go into 13 and 5, so we're going to have to factor this the long way by decomposition. I need to find numbers that have a product of A times C, 6 times negative 5 is negative 30, and a sum of the B value, 13. When I have a negative product, I know one of my integers is going to be positive, the other is going to be negative. And in this case, the integers that work for satisfying this product and sum are 15 and negative 2. 15 times negative 2 is negative 30. 15 plus negative 2 is 13. What I have to do now is split my middle term, split the 13x into a sum of 15x and negative 2x. And what I do from here is I factor by grouping. I look at the first two terms, 6x squared and 15x, take out the greatest common factor between those two, which would be 3x. I then divide each of those terms by the 3x I factored out. 6x squared divided by 3x would be 2x. 15x divided by 3x will be 5. The last two terms are negative 2x and negative 5. When the first term in your group is negative, you should always at least common factor out a negative 1. And it turns out that that is the biggest factor I could take out from both of these terms. So I will common factor out a negative 1 from the last two terms, and then divide each of them by the negative 1 I factored out. Negative 2x divided by negative 1 is 2x, and negative 5 divided by negative 1 is positive 5. Notice once again we have a common binomial of 2x plus 5. I can remove that as a common factor, divide each of the terms by what I took out, and what I'm left with for my second factor is 3x minus 1. Part D looks similar, but notice the middle term has a y, and the last term has a y squared. But actually, the same strategy we used for the first three examples is going to work with getting expressions like this into factored form as well. We should always start, I guess, by checking for a common factor between the three terms, but there isn't any. So what we're going to have to do are find numbers who have a product of the coefficient of the first term, 4, times the coefficient of the last term, negative 6. 4 times negative 6 is negative 24, and a sum of the coefficient of the middle term, which is negative 5. The numbers that satisfy this product and sum are negative 8 and 3. Negative 8 times 3 is negative 24. Negative 8 plus 3 is negative 5. And because the leading coefficient of this expression is not 1, I'm going to have to factor this by decomposition. I'll keep my first term, but I'm going to split the middle term into a sum of negative 8xy and 3xy. 
Notice I split it into those two values because negative eight and three satisfy the product in sum we wanted and negative eight xy plus three xy is equivalent to negative five xy. So I'm allowed to do that. And now if I factor this by grouping, if I look at the first two terms, the greatest common factor between four x squared and negative eight xy would be four x. When I divide each of those terms by four x, four x squared divided by four x is x, negative eight xy divided by four x would be negative two y. If I look at the last two terms as a group, three xy and negative six y squared, the greatest common factor between those two would be a positive three y. When I divide each of the two terms by what I took out, 3xy divided by 3y is x, and negative 6y squared divided by 3y is negative 2y. Notice I got a common binomial. I can remove that as my first factor. And after I've removed that as my first factor, what I'm left with once I divide each of the terms by x minus 2y is 4x plus 3y. Two examples left. These ones are going to be a bit different because there is going to be a common factor I can remove from them to make my work a little bit easier. Notice from all three terms, they're all even numbers. So for sure I can common factor out at least a two from all three terms, and two does seem to be the greatest common factor between the three terms. So what I'll do is I'll remove two as my first factor, and then divide each of the terms by two. Six x squared divided by two is three x squared, 14 x over two is seven x, and four over two is two. I suppose I didn't have to remove this common factor of two first. I could have just gone ahead and tried to find my product in sum, factor by decomposition. We will end up with the same answer, but you will end up having to remove a common factor of two from one of the binomials at the end. It makes it a lot easier if we do it at the start. Now what I can do is just focus on the quadratic in the brackets. It's three terms. The coefficient of the x squared is not a one, so I'll have to do it by decomposition. I'll need to find numbers who have a product of a times c, 3 times 2 is 6, and a sum of the b value, which is 7. The numbers that multiply to 6 and add to 7 are 6 and 1. 6 times 1 is 6, 6 plus 1 is 7. What we do now is we split the middle term in the quadratic into 6x plus 1x. So I have 3x squared plus 6x plus 1x plus 2. We split it into 6x plus 1x because 6 and 1 satisfy the product in sum. Now I need to factor by grouping. If I look at the first two terms in the quadratic, 3x squared plus 6x, I could common factor a 3x from both of the terms. And when I divide them both by 3x, I would get x plus 2. The last two terms, x plus 2, there's nothing other than a 1 I could common factor out. So I'll do that. When I divide both of the terms by 1, they remain unchanged but I write it that way so that you can see that I have a common binomial of x plus two, which I can remove as a factor from both terms. And once that factor of x plus two is removed from both terms, I'm left with three x plus one as my last factor. And now let's do our last example. Part F is 16 x squared plus 26 x minus 12. In this example, once again, we should check for a common factor first. Because all of the numbers I see are even, I know for sure I can common factor out a two. And in fact, I think that is the greatest common factor between all three terms again. So let me start by common factoring out a two. Divide each of the terms by two, and I get eight x squared plus 13 x minus six. And now inside the brackets, I have a quadratic that's three terms, leading coefficient is not one. I'll have to factor this by decomposition. I will need to find numbers who have a product of a times c, 8 times negative 6 is negative 48, and a sum of the b value, 13. The numbers that satisfy this product in sum are 16 and negative 3. 16 times negative 3 is negative 48. 16 plus negative 3 is 13. What I do is I split the middle term of the quadratic, which started as a 13x. I'm going to split it into a sum of 16x and negative 3x. I split it to those two because 16 and negative three satisfy the product in sum. I'll now factor it by grouping. If I look at the first two terms, eight x squared and 16 x, the greatest common factor between those two would be eight x. Divide them each by eight x and I get x plus two. The greatest common factor between the last two terms, negative three x and negative six, 
would be negative three. And I'm taking out a negative because the first term in that group is negative. When that's the case, we always take out a negative common factor. I'll divide each of those terms by negative three, and that will give me, once again, x plus two. I have a common binomial of x plus two. I can remove that as a common factor. And then what I'm left with when I divide each of the terms by that x plus two is eight x minus three. That's the end of this lesson. In order to get good at getting quadratics from standard form to factored form, you really have to do a lot of practice questions. You'll get more comfortable with finding your numbers that satisfy the product in sum, and you'll get better at recognizing what method is the proper method depending on what your original quadratic looks like. Make sure you go to jensenmath.ca and try out all the practice questions.